Owens Corning is proud to support and celebrate our Platinum Preferred Contractor Network. I'd like to congratulate Jason Kudo, brand president at Kudo Construction and sales leader at Infinity Home Services for being named a Young Gun by Roofing Contractor Magazine. Jason, your commitment to and involvement in the roofing industry is inspiring. This award is well deserved. Hi, everyone, and welcome to a very special episode of Roofing Contractors Best of Success podcast show. I'm RC Editor in Chief Art Eisner, and I'm glad you joined us today for a unique contractor QA sponsored by Owens Corning with roofing industry young gun Jason Kudo of Kudo Construction in New Bedford, Massachusetts. Jason is brand president with Kudo Construction and sales leader with Infinity Home Services. Thanks so much for being here, Jason. How are you? I'm I'm doing great. It's a pleasure to be here. You know, always been an advocate for Roofing Contractor Magazine. Love what you guys do. So appreciate the opportunity to be on the show. Awesome. Well, thanks again for being here. So as I mentioned, if uh, uh, if Jason looks a little familiar to RC followers, it's because he was part of the 2024 class of Young Guns featured in our March e-magazine and highlighted at Best of Success 19 in Dallas. Uh, Jason, tell us a little bit about how you got started in roofing. Yeah, so um, I got into roofing not by choice, but uh, by a family heritage. So my dad, you know, started the business and, you know, like anybody who, you know, like any entrepreneur gets in, it was really a small organization. And, well, my father being a Portuguese immigrant uh, really loved to utilize the free labor of having his son. So Myself and my brothers at a very young age where most kids were excited about summer school vacation, or I'm sorry, summer vacation. Well, my brothers and I wished we were part of summer school because, uh, you know, rather than be in summer school than to be in the dead heat of the summer on some of these roofs, you know, shingling. It isn't an easy job. But yeah, I came into the roofing business uh, by requirement, not by choice, if we can say. But Ultimately, you and your brother, you and your brother actually partnered together uh, and and uh, took on the family legacy. Tell us a little bit about that. And and when did that happen? Yeah, so it's it's a great question. In 2008 is when myself and my brother, when we partnered up um, and ultimately took over the business. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I can't tell you how thankful it is to have a brother in the business. You know, he's my business partner, but, you know, it's two minds, you know, work better than one. But. Yeah, it's been a great so All since right. 2008. And uh, just recently, you've taken on a new role or a new partnership with Infinity Home Services. Uh, tell us a little bit about that opportunity. Yeah, Infinity Home Services. You know, we we as an organization, you know, we partnered with um, Infinity Home Services in going on two years now. And it's been what a ride. I mean, it's really been what we embody as Infinity Home Services is that none of us are ever going to be as strong as all of us. It's the power of a group and, and like-minded individuals together. You know, taking on the role as sales leader, it's definitely been, you know, I, I tell people all the time, it's like, I've been on a roller coaster since the time I partnered on with Infinity Home Services. And it's been quite a journey and quite a ride. It's definitely had its challenges for sure. I mean, one thing is, it's a lot of travel requirements, it's, you know, we're kind of spread out throughout the United States and now in Canada as well. So, you know, uh, helping out the other brands has been, you know, like anything else, it's a challenge, but it's a rewarding uh, situation to see, you know, being able to impact and influence and help organizations like great partners that we have in any capacity has been such a joy and truly a dream come true for me. Right. So you're still, you know, you're still running a roofing operation and you've taken on this uh, strategic acquisition, you know, uh, uh, role along with sales. What what else has changed about, uh, you know, how you are doing business now in roofing? You know, I mean, I'm going to tell you one thing is partnering with Infinity Home Services has been great, right? I mean, we have some really specific individuals that are really hyper specific in you know, different departments, you know, I mean, just recently we had a team come in and really helped and rebuild our network infrastructure. I mean, and that's one small piece of so many resources that we have. So 
what that's really given me is the ability to really hone in on my focus on the strengths that I really have and not worry about some of those other mundane things that I maybe was not excited about doing. Well, now we have people that really help with that, where I really get to focus on the things I do. That being up, being able to free up some time has also given me the ability to help the rest of the brands and Infinity Home Services as I have. So, Well, let's talk about uh, what you do, and that is sell. Uh, you're passionate and have really excelled as a sales leader. What are some uh, keys to really growing an effective sales organization that you've implemented? So I'm going to turn back to a book um, that I read a while ago. As a matter of fact, it's 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 one of those books I'll read on a yearly basis and reread, but it's been selling. And it's the most comprehensive study that was ever done in sales. And the one attribute that was consistent amongst the most successful sales organizations was those who train consistently and religiously. The organizations that train and have a culture of training is by far one of the most important things. Now, there's a lot of great systems out there. There's a lot of different strategies. You know, I can tell you there's all of them, just about all of them have been successful to some extent, but practicing and having a repeatable process, I would say is number one. Two, I touched on the culture. I think having a culture of, you know, in an organization, a strong culture of being, and it really comes down to values, right? Is it a culture that really is a company that is really based on values? Values being the number one thing we hire and train on values. And for us, it's really been the most important thing. So I would say two, having a strong culture of, of you know, being on time, um, whatever those values should be that you find most important, but really being those to a pulp. And third is always going to, for me, it's always going to be know the numbers, know your metrics, track them and hold your team accountable. And I don't mean just sales volume, but, you know, know what your team's demo rates are, know what their closing rates are, know how many of them that you come across, no demo, how is the call center doing? Really knowing those metrics that you can then take those metrics, know where the holes are or the gaps in your process that you can then go and train on, again, being part of the culture of training and keep that consistency. Those will probably be my three big takeaways that I think make the consistency in any sales organization. Those are some great nuggets uh, and takeaways. You know, you've also had a knack for turning uh, adversity into assets, uh, uh, particularly I remember uh, for your profile, you know, telling us when you and your brother started out, you you inherited a lot of good business values from your father, but quite a bit of debt as well. Yet you were able to turn that around. What is the, what's, how do you explain your knack for doing that? Is it, uh, is it something that's just kind of entrepreneurial built in you or is that something you learned? You know, I would love to take the credit and say that this was something that was built in us. I mean, one thing our father did give to us, myself and my brother, and, and as kids was a really strong work ethic, right? We were never scared to get, you know, in the trenches and work alongside the team, you know, essentially being a leader from the front. But, you know, talking about the fact that we were in such debt, you know, what it really creates is from, you know, that having to overcome that adversity, really being in the hole, you know, that really creates a strength and a sense of resilience. As a matter of fact, I mean, there's almost to any extent, most successful people will always have a story of extreme adversity that they've had to overcome, you know, and it's the strength and the resiliency that you build out of that. But I will say, you know, one, the hard work ethic, two, being having to build thick skin and resiliency I would say is ultimately the two traits that you develop having to overcome the adversity, which ultimately become those assets that I think create that success. Having accomplished uh, and done so much already in uh, in roofing, uh, how have you viewed your age as an asset in your career? Yeah, that's that's um that's a great question. You know, when I think about that, I think at this point. You know, uh, being in, you know, my later 30s, I don't know if I can say it's an asset or I think maybe the asset for me is I'm still maybe on the younger side where I can connect with a younger generation and help inspire 
you know, new leaders that maybe wouldn't consider the roofing industry to be a great career path. I think maybe that is an advantage of being on the younger side. But I will tell you that, you know, when we speak about age and being in the industry, I remember being in this, you know, in this business at a young age where, you know, I would bring my father along with me um, just because, you know, when you're closing potentially a three, four hundred thousand dollar project, you know, you can sit in front of some of the board if, if you're presenting in a board and, and the question becomes, hey, is this person capable? And sometimes having that seniority there alongside you helps build a little bit of that, you know, um, credibility. Yeah. Credibility. Exactly. So I would say, you know, I can't really, other than the fact of being young and being able to connect, I can't say it's been a disadvantage or an advantage. I just, it's never been something that I really kind of honed in on. It's just been something that I've dealt with. It is what it is. You can't fix your age. You work with what you got, work on your strengths and keep building upon the weaknesses. So. Well, you've been an early adopter of technology in the roofing space, uh, and uh, we've talked about how that's helped uh, you know your success. What have you noticed? What's changing about how homeowners uh, or customers are using technology now, and how have you been able to leverage that for your business? Yeah, so technology is, I mean, AI, the world of AI, it's moving really fast. And first and foremost, I would say it might be foreign to you, but you need to get on board. You need to you need to get on the, the, the train as well as, I mean, it's just a moving industry, moving very fast, and you need to be adopted. It's just part of what it is I see in 10 years. If you don't take on this technology, you're going to be left in the wayside. But there's a lot of advantages. I mean, when you can take you know, the now the 3D visualizations and give a homeowner of what that roof and color is going to look like on their home to give that sense of comfort, right? To give them that sense of, of feeling, I think is so beneficial. But from the homeowner side, the homeowners today are extremely well educated. I mean, they're almost, you can find out what a roof can cost you online to, you know, what, what pricing looks like to, ultimately what your roof can look like to what to expect. So I think a good thing about it is the homeowner has become very much educated. Some of it maybe is not believing the information because what's online isn't always true. So that can be sometimes a challenge, but you want to make sure that you're very knowledgeable going into the home. But I would say ultimately, I think the technology has been a win-win as long as you understand what is out there and know how to work around, whether it be the weakness or build upon the strengths. All right. And no doubt you've uh, you've had some great uh, partnerships uh, on the technology side. Let's talk about suppliers for a minute. What uh, what do you need as a contractor? What do you look for in that supplier relationship and how have you been able to build them yourself in your career? You know, I will I will say and look, I know Owens Corning is sponsoring this, but, you know, I will give a shout out to Owens Corning and I will say. They have been a huge part of the success here at Kudo Construction. The reason being is the level of resources that they've been able to provide from the networking events to the training and the mentorships that I was able to build. And not only that, the network of friendships that I have that are now just a phone call away if I'm stumbled in a situation have really been second to none. I will also say that, you know, from a partnership perspective, what do I expect? Obviously, we got to make the numbers, the dollars and cents have to make sense. I mean, it's what it is, especially in an economic situation like we are right now. Mm. I think the dollars and cents do make sense, but it's also about service, being able to have that conversation, a level of trust, um, I think is ultimately what we look for as, you know, in those types of partnerships. All right. Well, you know, you've obviously uh, built yourself in uh, into uh, a place uh, where you're committed to roofing looks like uh, you know you're here for the long haul. What are you looking forward to in that regard as the as the industry continues to evolve? You know, I can tell you for me, what am I looking forward to? I feel, you know, as much success as Kudo has had, and even being a part of IHS has been just an amazing journey for me. It's something I'm truly gratified in. I really feel as a business owner. My highest calling is the ability to change people's lives. 
And the part that I look forward to the most is that I feel that I'm just getting started. That this is still only the beginning of what's to come with the level of resources now at the fingertips. And, you know, you mentioned earlier the technology that is out there and, and feeling as though we like to be at the forefront of this technology, I think is going to be something that is going to be a huge propel or propulsion to what is in store for Kudo Construction as well as IHS. All right. Well, uh, Jason, thank you for the great insight and conversation. Where can people find out more about uh, your company or how to get in touch? Well, I will say, you know, one, you can look us up on our website, um, you know, kudoconstruction.com. Also, please look into infinityhomeservices.com. We got a lot going on. I keep saying, you know, hit that refresh button. We got some great partners coming in uh, consistently that really have some great values and it's really exciting. So. All right. Well, before you guys head there, please make sure you're staying up to date with the latest news, videos, podcasts, and other featured content on roofingcontractor.com by signing up for our, our free digital e-magazine and our newsletters through our homepage. Stay safe, and we will see you next time. Thanks again, Jason. Take care. Thank you very much.